Hey guys, what's up? It's Charles Swope here and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new video. And let me just start off by addressing the elephant in the room, the elephant being me. Because I don't normally make these style of videos, which normally means there is some sort of a... Houston, we have a problem. That problem being... SEO advice from niche site YouTube channels and more specifically algorithm or algorithm update advice to do with Google, Google algorithm update advice from said YouTube channels. I want to preface this video by saying that no one is safe. Just because I'm friends with people or just because I know you, if you are contributing towards the problem that I'm addressing in this video, you are in my crosshairs. I will 100% convince people in this video why and what you are doing is wrong. Now, the most recent Google Core update, that was the one in May, exposed even more of the industry for exactly what it is. Misleading SEO enthusiasts and SEO professionals so that they can profit because bagging the affiliate clicks and core sales from YouTube views seems a hell of a lot easier than it does from their own niche websites. For those that don't know me, I'm Charles Float. I've been in the SEO game for nearly 15 years. I've helped thousands of websites recover from Google algorithm penalties and updates. And I've built a portfolio of websites that are basically resistant to Google algorithm updates at this point and have been resistant to every single algorithm update that has dropped since they've really mattered. Now, this for, for those that do know me, they will know that I do not shy away from a battle and that I will not shy away from calling people out. My analysis of algorithm updates and changes is based on a multitude of factors, including single variable testing, my network of SEO veterans, and last and least for a reason you are going to find out shortly, my own portfolio of websites. So without any further ado, let's jump into things. Firstly, I want to break down my core problems with the analysis most of these channels put out for algorithm updates. Then I'm going to show you my exact problems with several of these channels and I'm going to show you a few of their websites to, ex to expose how bad this industry really has gotten. So the main issue I have with these channels is their takes on algorithm updates. And yes, I do have other issues with these channels that I'm going to cover in this video. But the main one I have with them is that their takes on algorithm updates and the information that they convey about those updates to their users, to their audience and to the members of the SEO community who do act upon those words and upon those videos. I know that because during this last update in May, I ran a special offer for people who wanted consultations who had gotten hit specifically by that May update. I did over 50 of those consultations and almost all of the people that I was speaking to is following at least one of the channels in this uh, video's advice and that advice was simply wrong as I'm about to show you. So the main issue I have again is that your site's experience is unique from everybody else's. The reason you rank is nuanced. The reason you tank is nuanced. The reason anything happens to your site is a unique experience to your website. It does not reflect the overall algorithm. It does not reflect anything to do with the, the actual ranking abilities that Google has because it is a such a nuanced situation that anything could have affected the results that that site got. So your site's experience is unique from everybody else's. The reason it tanks or the reason it ranks is nuanced. And the only way that you get a true overview of what an algorithm actually affected is if you look at it from a generic and a generalist perspective. So the way I look at algorithm updates and the way I do it is via something, well, I have a, actually I have a several stage, three stage methodology, but my single variable testing methodology, which is the primary source of information that I get for my videos about these updates that I drop to you guys is single variable testing. And that takes one element on a page or to a page 
at a time, and then I compare those elements via a unique query that only my experimental test pages are ranking for and see which drastic changes happened during that update. As an example, if only the pages that had a singular niche edit going to them, and by the, the statement of a singular niche edit, I mean I've set up a blank page on a blank CMS, HTML, nothing going on, um, and the URL is the keyword. That's it. So the URL has the keyword within it. That's it. The only other variable that is going to be affecting that page's rankings is the other element that I have affected on that page. Now, if only the pages which had a singular niche edit linking to that page move drastically versus all of the other pages that had a singular link but a, from a different link type, then my correlation is far from perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than giving direct advice based on nuanced situations. I also compare my data with others in the SEO field that have actual data science qualifications. I barely finished high school, um, like Eric Lancheris or Marie Haynes, both of which I highly, highly recommend you go and follow for algorithm update related advice. Unlike income school, the very first people we're going to be targeting and picking on in this video. And for good reason. They've blown up over the past couple of years for being basically a poorly done version of authority hacker. Though you have to give them credit where credit's due. They are hella consistent. And as a result, they've actually surpassed Mark and Gale on several social media platforms already and will continue to likely do so in the future because consistency is half the battle. If you show up, you'll probably get paid eventually. Now, the, the video sh that Ricky introduced to the world and, and put on the YouTube channel for the May 2022 core update is basically the number one video for every term that you search in YouTube around that update. If you put in May core update 2022 into YouTube search, it's highly likely that these guys' video is going to be number one. So it's only really fair that they, that considering they are first, that arguably, and arguably they are some of the worst offenders in the industry as well, that they get to go first. So the video itself opens with a myriad of issues. Number one, they be they read Google's documentation and Google's um, releases about the update as if it is gospel without any sort of surrounding information. And anyone who knows about updates, anyone who has been during the last update and is an SEO professional will know that the update did not come out when Google said it did. It came out about a week before and that several SEOs on Twitter actually predicted that it was going to be dropping in the week following because of the turbulence that we all saw in the week before. However, it's also then it carried on going out well into June, all the way to around June 30th when people still saw recovery or even further losses of their traffic. Um, and then the second issue in the video is they are telling users to analyze a core update at a page level. However, it's a core update, so it affects the entire site and it affects the entire domain. So you shouldn't generally start at a page level. You should probably start at comparing your, your losses to competitors that won. Now, the third point and the third problem is that they're telling users to write new content instead of re-optimizing lost pieces, which is a terrible idea in the first place because if you have lost rankings for a page, you should probably reevaluate and redo that page first um, instead of just creating new content that should magically rank even though the old style that you're still going to continue doing didn't work and didn't work with this update. And finally, and last but not least, especially, they decided for some God knows what reason to show this absolute abomination of a niche website. So I need to introduce to you Ricky's website, fishtanksetups.com, possibly one of the worst Amazon affiliate phishing websites to ever be created. And that is saying something because everybody seems to be in the Amazon niche, Amazon phishing niche specifically. A lot of people seem to be doing phishing websites and I've seen a lot of terrible sites out there. So for this to be in the top three, it's gotta be pretty bad. So firstly, basically none of the affiliate content actually ranks. So it's probably not making any money at all from Amazon, maybe a few dollars a month, if that. And generally that's because the affiliate content is terrible. Next up, Ricky talks a lot about eat in his videos and in income source content, but this site doesn't even have an author bio. It does have this weird sidebar of Ricky's face, which says it's 
Ricky is the owner of the site, but then if you go to the About Us page, it says that the owner's name is Jordan. So that's telling Google exactly about the expert behind the site, I guess. Um, the site also uses 2009 style internal linking where they just use the related posts plugin at the bottom of the page, which also comes with its own myriad of SEO and non SEO issues as well, and has generally been against SEO best practice for WordPress for a very long time. And then last but not least, the only real money maker for the website is Ezoic, which makes the the page load time of the site over 20 seconds. And if they just swapped to AdSense, the site would be probably a hell of a lot faster, a hell of a lot higher rankings, and actually earning some money because the users can actually load the website and see ads versus waiting 20 seconds to not click on the Zoic ad anyway. And then if we actually compare these sites to some of the other sites in the exact same niche, launched roughly at the exact same time. Bear in mind that Ricky bought this website, so he, he and but he also bought it a while ago, is his quote. So he has had more than enough time to make the changes necessary that an SEO professional of his grade should be able to make. Um, but if we compare it to sites in the exact same niche, launched at basically the exact same time with similar topics, similar everything, well, then you get sites that are doing 60 times the traffic the income schools boys have managed to scrape together with this flaming pile of hot garbage. Trust me, this is insane that the exact same niche, exact same time launch, exact same sites can have 60 extra traffic. You have messed up. I wanted to say a different word there. You have messed up royally, son. So, all in all, telling people how to get traffic when they can barely rank a site in the fishing niche probably isn't the best of ideas. I mentioned Authority Hacker already earlier in this video, so I might as well cover them next. But let me say that the majority of Mark and Gail's training is fantastic. They have had a lot of success with niche website building, which is a lot more than can be said for most of the people featured in this video. And they have contributed massively to the SEO scene. Um, I have been in attendance with them at several conferences. They have had some of the best talks I've seen as well. That being said, for this specific video, unfortunately, they have put themselves in my crosshairs. And that's because, not only because of this specific video, other videos as well, but their most recent video about the May, May update, which was nearly 36 minutes long, Within that 36 minute time frame, there was basically no, or the majority, let's say, the majority of information had nothing to do with the actual algorithm at hand. Gail especially has this like to go off on tangents about what he is going to test or about his general SEO theorization. And if you mix that already being confusing because Gail likes to go off on tangents anyway, with the fact that Gail is French and that English language is his second language. And let me also say that his English is amazing, right? For somebody who does speak English second, Gail is one of the best English language speakers probably in the world at this point. Um, however, my English is not perfect and I'm from England. So Gail's English is nowhere near perfect, right? And he does every so often slip up with words he meant to say and what he actually said because it's not quite correct in terms of the English language as well as the fact that people are already confused because it's not quite clear if that advice is directly to do with the algorithm update or it's to do with Gail's thoughts about SEO and testing and theorization. So my advice purely from a um, kind of respective way to make sure that your audience and everybody in the SEO industry understands exactly what is being said. Make sure that you are completely and properly compounding the topics so that you are only talking about the algorithm update in this section and that all the other stuff that you want to talk about is clearly defined as a separate section and that it's not all just convoluted in together and that it's really confusing, especially for people who aren't native English speakers. Now onto one that's not necessarily giving terrible advice around algorithm updates, but more is giving awful 
and extremely harmful financial and life decision advice to his audience. And it's something that I really feel needs to be addressed um, and that not enough people have addressed it and that not enough people have said it directly to Luke's face. So Luke's site right now is successful. His SEO advice is usually on point, but the financial and story statements that he makes to his audience that will take those statements on board, and a lot of them will take them literally, um, they are extremely harmful. Firstly, Luke's origin story for his audience consists of his original website or site portfolio or whatever getting smashed and him getting losing all of his income from that site or those site portfolio or whatever. Then what he decided to do as a result of him getting smashed across the board here, he decided to take all of his resources, all of his time, all of his cash, all of his energy and put it into one niche website. Now, if you've just had all of your assets and income obliterated, it is not a good idea and it is just pure common sense to not put all of your eggs in one basket. But then to go one step further, Luke decided that he would build in public. He'd be one of the first niche site people to build in public. However, I have for a long, long time said it is a very bad idea to publicly share the URLs of the websites that are your livelihood and that are making you money because there is a number of abundantly crazy people on the internet that for no apparent reason will try and harm you and your life. If not for the fact that you might have ignored or you might have ignored them or you might have annoyed them at some point in the past and they will go to extreme lengths to fuck with you. And as a result of that, making sure that you are insulating yourself as a result of that, um, from as a result of those people existing, is an even better idea. There's this idea that you build a moat, right? You build a moat around your site, and that's what Luke says. He has a moat. Nobody can compete with him because it's not even profitable for him to do his own keywords. Well, that's another piece, another piece of really bad financial advice that you are unprofitably and unsustainably building a website. So again just please stop giving your impressionable audience really horrendous financial and life advice that could potentially devastate them and their families for years, if not decades to come. Next in my site is Alex from WP Eagle. He's been making YouTube content on affiliate and niche sites for basically close to a decade at this point, which is why I'd expect his sites to be substantially better than they are. He reveals multiple URLs in his video, all of which are seemingly down from the May update and probably for a good reason. So let's take a look at his most heavily hit site, which was his gardening site. Surprise, surprise, another niche YouTube channel that is in the gardening niche. It seems that these channels do not or cannot come up with their own niches to save their life. So the site absolutely tanked. According to Ahrefs, it lost about 98% of its traffic. And it's not all that surprising when you take a deeper look at both what the May update targeted and the current state of the website. So with Alex's site, I thought it would be better to do a live overview of the site because I have a list of the things I think is wrong with this website. And it's no surprising because Alex actually is a web developer. He then transitioned into affiliate and SEO, etc. So in all fairness, he's the only non-specific SEO in this video. So let's get started. The first thing, the site uses non-contextual internal linking. Um, as an example here, it uses the related posts. Again, this was hit in the last update and it's a terrible idea. Anyway, for most sites that lack or any, any sort of authority that would make this usable and useful. Then the internal linking also often repeats links to the same page from one page. So that is you are linking from one page to another page multiple times, even though that is against 
SEO best practice. Um, as an example here, if you go to heavy duty SAT trucks here, it's linking here once, and then it's also linking um, here again to the exact same page. So again, repeating architects, repeating internal links is a bad idea. The first one will generally only get counted or it will get devalued because there's multiple links on the page, as well as the fact that the keyword signals that you're using in the architect get devalued. Multiple reasons why you should only have one contextual internal link on a page. Footer, navigation, and sidebar links do not count towards that. We're only talking about links within the body content. The site also, um, also on certain pages, there's just no links whatsoever. So I think it was this page here. There's just no internal links apart from right at the bottom here. So this stuff is just a waste of content essentially because you're not utilizing any of the space to send uh, keyword specific signals to a page that is actually going to generate you traffic and money. Um, this page is going to generate very little of either of those two. Likewise, um, the these pages also have a lot of cannibalization issues. So, if I take a look at this Sack Trucks Your Ultimate Guide page, there's also a Sack Trucks Buyer's Guide page, which these two pages are essentially the same thing. Um, and they're gonna be targeting the same keyword Sack Trucks and they're gonna be cannibalizing each other for the same thing because a Buyer's Guide and Ultimate Guide are essentially the exact same thing. Then if we look at the meta titles, um, Every single one is basically auto-generated from Yoast or Rank Math or whatever plugin is using on the site. They're all, which means basically all of them are too long and they are not utilizing any specific kind of optimization signals that you could be utilizing when putting in your meta title. So there's no kind of meta title optimization going on the site either. Then we have the images. There's no alt text on any of the images. Um, they seem to just use randomly kind of inserted images from Google Images and stuff. A lot of them are very low quality. A lot of them are resized and stuff, which is fine, but they don't have any sort of value because there's no title, there's no alt tag, there's no caption, there's nothing to tell Google about what's inside the image. And Google has gotten very, very good at understanding the context and, and contextualizing images to understand what is within it. So instead of using it as another way to stuff keywords and over-optimize your page, just use the alt text to tell Google exactly what is within the image because Google knows what is within the image. As an example, this might be a sack truck with books stacked on top of it with a green wallpaper in the background. Something along those lines. Tell Google exactly what's in the image because that is what Google is wanting. Next up, the about page is absolutely tiny on the site. If I can find it, it's about here. Um, it's tiny. There is a mention of Alex Cooper and website editor, but there's nothing about who Alex Cooper is, about um, you know, where he's from, anything to do with that kind of stuff. So there's no additional value about the end user. Also, this site has basically no social profiles. So there's nothing to help build the wheel along brand entity that you're trying to stack and entity stacking, as well as validate the authenticity of the website and the user and the person behind it. Um, those are just basic things that you should be adding on and every site should have at least get your uh, social profiles set up because that's a, another way to build links towards your website. And that foundational links is another thing that most people miss with their website. They're not building any social profiles, no citations, nothing to tell Google about the website, about the business, all of that kind of stuff. Um, as well as the fact that the actual URL structure is set up in a way that means it's not efficient. So this, um, this structure is purely a perfect example where you have the word sat trucks twice within the copy. You could very easily shorten this down to just this and you would have a lesser optimized URL. You would have a shorter URL from a, your, from a user perspective and you would have less convolution going on within the URL in general. Um, so just removing that kind of stuff and shortening the URLs down would be a perfect idea. And then the final thing is the category pages are indexed. So these pages which offer no value, they're never gonna rank for the term wheelbarrow, they have no unique content on them, they have no links going to them, they have basically no value whatsoever, they're just a waste of cruel budget and a waste of crawling um, and, and a waste of Google's crawling resources. I would just no index them. I blanket no index category and tag and author archive pages um, altogether anyway. 
um, and especially when these kind of paid pages are coming up in Google as the, they are archive pages, so they haven't even been corrected to be in their category. It's actually saying that it's it's an archive page. Um, so all in all, this website has a lot of stuff that the update specifically affected, and I think that it should be pretty easy to kind of get it bouncing back the opposite way. Um, just as kind of a final addition here, most of the content says it's by Sue, um, and that you have an author by Sue, but the blog and the about and all that kind of stuff says that the author is named Alex. So again, something that the income store guys did, um, income store, sorry, income school guys did. Ideally, you want to make sure that your authors are consistent so that you are creating that entity across the board. And there was a recent study that came out where a where a, an SEO firm, I believe Gail Bratton shared this study, but it wasn't by him. Um, where a firm added author bios to every single post on their site. They did a real long author bio with links to the author's social profiles, expansive information about the biography of the author, all of that stuff, and it did nothing for the rankings of the site. And I'm not very surprised by that because I don't think that it generally contributes nearly as much as these eat-loving folks would make you believe. And the analysis I just did with the problems I found on Alex's site was literally just me spending five minutes looking at the site. I didn't look at things like backlinks, monetization, or even do technical checks on schema, load time, all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, and Alex is actively trying to give advice whilst his own portfolio gets sunk. He has many uh, best SEO, be SEO best practice issues on his sites. And it is another one that falls into the category of publicly revealing sites you probably shouldn't be doing. He even goes as far as to often link to those, vid, to those sites from his own YouTube description, which does actually give you a, a sort of backlink. You get a nofollow link from the YouTube description, and it's a completely irrelevant backlink as well. Um, all that being said, there's not really any bad intentions as he's not really selling any courses. He is selling a theme, but considering the amount of time he's put into creating content, the amount of time he's been in this space, you'd expect your teachers to be a little bit more knowledgeable on the given subject and have a bit of success themselves with it as well. And last for a reason is because it's very hard to go after Jasper. Jasper is, ha is an awesome person. He has a great attitude for dealing with updates considering he has been hit several times. He's lost you know, 30 to 80% of his traffic when he's been hit. Um, and he's always got that can-do attitude about him. That being said, the only reason you are in this video, Jasper, is because of the other people that are in this video and how incestuous this niche site community has become. Because there are two other features in this video that are genuine features for a reason that are in Jasper's video descriptions as affiliate links. And if those people or if all of you all together are putting money in each other's pockets, then all of you are way, way, way less likely to call each other out for the poor form, poor information, and most importantly, poor ability a lot of you have shown throughout this video that I have show hopefully exposed. So in conclusion, the industry needs to stay away from turning nuanced occurrences into direct advice as if they were facts as well as the users at home should be doing some additional due diligence into these channels, what they're search saying, and specifically what they are often stupid enough to publicly share with you.